This is the Yaesu FT200DE, the brand new dual bander from Yaesu, and today we'll be taking an exclusive first detailed look at this great transceiver. The new FTM200DR or DE, depending on which region you're in, is a C4 FM digital multifunction transceiver. It's a great mid range radio that's packed with many impressive features. It's a 50 watt radio with three selectable power settings of 50 watts, 25 watts and 5 watts and the good thing is, is that unlike a lot of other radios, it has a true 50 watt output power on both VHF and UHF. It has a 2 inch high res screen with a QVGA full colour TFT display as part of a demountable front panel controller. It's digital and analog so it has C4 FM digital communication features such as automatic mode select, digital group ID operation and smart navigation. Primary memory group with a single receiver provides constant monitoring and communication on up to 5 channels and the MAG or memory auto grouping function allows memory channels to be automatically categorised in all, airband, VHF band, UHF band or other. It has 1104 memory channels including 5 home channels, 50 sets of frequencies for programmable memory scan and 999 basic memories and these can be given alpha tags. It has a high speed band scope function with up to 61 channels centred on the current VFO frequency and up to 21 channels in memory mode. It also has a built in 66 channel high precision GPS receiver and external GPS device connectivity as well as wireless operation capability with the Bluetooth headset which requires the installation of an optional Bluetooth unit. The radio has voice record function for receive and transmit audio which is handy and the audio is saved to micro SD card and the radio supports cards up to 32GB. The FTM200 acts as a great radio scanner with fast scan and a wide receive range of 108MHz to just under 1GHz. It comes with a DTMF microphone, radio unit mounting bracket, a bracket for the controller, a control cable for operation with the front panel mounted, a 10 foot or 3 meter control cable for operation with a detached front panel, a USB cable, a DC power cable and a detailed operating manual. So let's take a look at the controls. Now the radio is surprisingly easy to navigate and set up. I've never used a Yaesu transceiver like this before so it's completely new to me. The VMMW button switches between VFO and memory mode and when held allows you to access the memory channel list where you can recall, write, edit or delete a channel. A and B switches between the two VFOs however this is a single receiver radio not dual receive meaning that while you can monitor two VFOs simultaneously you can't receive on one and transmit on the other at the same time. GM allows you to change the digital group ID which is factory set at double zero. DX allows you to toggle between digital, analog FM or AMS mode. Now AMS mode is quite clever because the radio listens for both analog and digital signals and sets its receive mode based on what it hears. The on off button is self explanatory but also doubles as a keypad lock. The F menu button allows you to access the function menu and from here you can manually input frequencies, enter a really fast scan mode within the VFO and choose your output power. You can set the squelch type, for example CTCSS or DCS tones and access repeater settings. Repeater auto shift automatically sets the repeater shift within the 2 meter or 70 centimeter repeater channels. Repeater R is the repeater reverse which reverses the transmit and receive frequencies when working through a repeater and you can also set the CTCSS tone. DTMF allows you to configure a sendable DTMF code and APRS turns the APRS function on or off. Frequently used frequencies that have been registered using the PMG function can be displayed in an easy to understand manner by pressing the PMG PW key. 
Display allows you to toggle the band scope function and shows you other active frequencies within 60 channels centered around your current frequency. And when pressed and held, the display function can be changed, which we'll come to in more detail soon. Squelch and back allows you to change the squelch level and back means you can go backwards within the menus. The band button when pressed changes the current band you're on and when held allows you to omit certain bands if you don't want to include them. So now let's look in more detail at all the menu options. They're quite comprehensive and there's a lot to take in but we'll go through them all in detail. So holding the F menu button allows you to access advanced settings such as manual frequency input, display brightness, main frequency colour, band scope, location info, compass, display mode, transmit power, AMS transmit mode, mic gain, vox, auto dialer, timeout timer, digital VW which is wide or narrow, FM bandwidth and RX or receive mode. So a lot of those are self explanatory but I want to quickly pull a couple of those functions out. You can set the main frequency colour to red, white or blue and display mode allows you to toggle between things like altitude, timer and clock or GPS info and this is handy for portable operations and can be toggled by holding the display button. Next we have all of the functions relating to memory such as home which enables you to go back to a preset home channel of your choice. Memory channel list allows you to access the memory channels where you can write, recall, edit or delete a channel. And we also have memory list mode and program memory clear. Next is the configuration settings such as keypad beep, band skip which allows you to exclude certain bands, repeater shift function, repeater shift direction, repeater shift frequency, repeater shift reverse, mic programmable keys, date and time adjust and format, time zone, frequency step, clock type, unit either metric or imperial, automatic power off, GPS standard, GPS device which means internal or external, GPS log and recording settings as well as start and stop. Again a lot of those are self explanatory but I did mention the programmable microphone keys and you can see four of them on the microphone and they can be easily set to any number of settings. P1 is fixed but P2, P3 and P4 can be changed. Next on the list is signalling where you can set up DTMF configuration, DTMF sequences, squelch type which includes CTCSS tones and DCS codes, tone squelch frequency and squelch expansion which means different squelch types can be set for both transmit and receive. There's settings for pager code which permits calls to specific stations only, PR frequency which allows you to edit a non-communication squelch CTSS tone, bell ringer which alerts you to a call from a certain station and WX alert for the American weather frequencies. Now I did say before that the radio acts as a great scanner and in the settings you can toggle scan on or off, activate dual receive mode, set the dual receive interval and set priority revert which will send the radio back to a home channel when the PTT is pressed no matter which VFO is being received and you can also set the scan resume mode. Next is the digital settings. Digital pop-up allows you to set the time and other stations information stays on your screen. Location service allows you to choose whether you send your location on transmit and standby beep allows you to choose whether or not to omit the standby beep when the other station finishes their transmission. Next on the list we have GM functions. Now for those who don't know the GM or group monitor function automatically monitors on the same frequency for any other stations with the GM function in operation or stations operating in DM mode within communications range. The GM function then displays the acquired direction and distance information for each detected call sign on the screen. If the DGID number is other than double zero, the GM function will check for partner stations set to the same DGID number with the GM function turned on that are within communication range. In addition to knowing who's in the service area, the APL or automatic position locating screen 
indicates the positions of the group members, and these are centered on your own station and up to four are simultaneously displayed. The direction and progress of each station is displayed and you can check each other's position, distance and moving direction. And you can also use GM functions to send data such as messages and images with other stations. DPID shows the digital personal ID list. Rangeringer emits a bell when checking for stations within your coverage. Radio ID allows you to see your radio ID that can't be changed. And Log displays a list of recorded voices, messages and images. Next is the Wires X function menu. Repeat slash wires frequency allows you to toggle between manual and presets for repeater operation. Search setup sets the item order on node or room lists. You can edit the names of categories where nodes and rooms are registered. You can delete registered nodes and rooms and set the wires X DGID number used when connecting to a local node station. Next we have the data menu where you can select the parameters for the data and COM port on the back of the radio. You can set the operating band of the radio's internal APRS modem, you can set the data speed for APRS operation, and you can set the output status. And finally, we have the APRS menu itself, which allows you to set your destination, filter, message text, toggle APRS on or off, mute APRS, set the pop-up time, turn the ringer on or off, set the call sign settings for the ringer, transmit delay, unit display, beacon information settings and status text input settings, automatic or manual beacon transmit and digital repeater route setting. Then we have the digital repeater route address settings, my call sign setting, group filter for received messages, automatic reply, my position settings, my symbol, settings for a position comment, sort and filter functions and voice alert. And finally, in the extensive APRS menu, we have the APRS station list screens, message list screens, beacon automatic or manual transmit, and beacon one-time manual transmit. Next is the SD card settings. You can back up the SD card, view what's on it, and also format it. Next, we have the options menu for added extras. This covers Bluetooth, voice memory, FES record which relates to the optional voice card unit, track select which selects a clip to play from the voice card unit, play stop and clear which are all self-explanatory, voice guide which announces the operating frequency and USB camera for the optional microphone and camera. And lastly there are clone and reset functions. So that is the first part on the Yaesu FTM200. There was quite a lot to take in there, but sometimes it's good just to go through the menus in detail to get your head around everything. In reality, it's actually quite a simple radio and very easy to use, as you'll see in upcoming videos. If you have any questions or need any clarity on anything we've discussed, then let me know in the box below and stay tuned for more instalments on this great little radio. If you want to look at it further, I got mine from Moonraker and I'll leave the links in the description below.